Hello and welcome to the University of San Francisco School of Nursing and Health Professions informational webinar. Today we'll be learning about the Population Health Leadership Doctor of Nursing Practice Program. My name is Juman and I will be your moderator for today. With that, I will turn this over to Brian Buds, who's the Chair of the Health Leadership and Innovation Department at USF. Thanks, Juman, and let me take a moment to introduce myself and the other presenters today. Uh, as Juman said, I'm Brian Buds, and I'm currently the chair of the department that houses this program that you're showing interest in today, the DNP, the Population Health Focus. Joining me today are Dr. Robin Bukeri and Dr. Marjorie Barter, uh, also members of the, uh, the department in which this program exists. And you uh, have met our moderator, Juman, already. Marjorie, Robin, and I have uh, all taught here at USF for a long time, and we're particularly excited about being part of this new focus for our DNP degree, the focus on population health. Next slide, Juman, please. This slide uh, represents our proposed agenda for this session here. We're going to talk some about the school itself and the School of Nursing and the university. We'll also talk about the DNP degree and our particular program. While we will discuss some of the details, we won't have time to get too deeply into the specifics, but we hope to give you the information that you need about the program, uh, as well as to give you some opportunity to ask us questions. Speaking of questions, the control panel, which I believe should be on the right of your screen, is what you'll use to post a question to us and we'll try to get to as many of the questions as we can. In addition, we are recording this webinar so that you'll have an opportunity to look at it again. Next slide, please, Jumon. And our next slide. As you can see on this slide, this school, the University of San Francisco, has been around for a long time. And it's been a leader and innovator for its entire history. We in the School of Nursing and Health Professions are particularly proud of our leadership in nursing and our being the first institution, the first university to offer both the DNP degree, but also our clinical CNL or clinical nurse leader master's degree. Next slide, come on. When you come to USF, you'll find that we're a school that takes the mission, that we, our mission quite seriously. In the School of Nursing and Health Professions, we particularly embrace a passion for the development of a just healthcare system that reaches all. We work hard at incorporating these values and the values of our, our Jesuit brothers here into our courses and into the practicum work done by you, the students, uh, throughout your DNP program. Next slide. This is Dr. Marjorie Barter speaking. And um, for many years, as you can see, uh, the PhD was the only terminal degree in nursing. And now we do have the DNP uh, as a practice degree. Um, previous to the DNP, whether nurses wanted a clinical focus or perhaps wanted a career in education, they only had the PhD as an option for a nursing doctorate. As a result, many nurses did seek PhDs in other disciplines such as education or psychology. The PhD is designed as a research focused degree and many nurses in the past completed the PhD but they didn't really desire a career in research and therefore they remained in clinical practice and sometimes became faculty who combined practice and teaching with a smaller research component. As you know, other professions have had practice degrees. Traditionally, physicians, dentists, attorneys have always had practice degrees. And now we've added physical therapists, pharmacists, occupational therapists, and others who have moved to a practice doctorate as entry into the practice. 
Um, the American Association of Colleges of Nursing introduced the doctoral DNP degree in 2004 specifically to prepare experts in specialized advanced nursing practice and to use evidence that was produced from research and provide advanced leadership skills to improve patient outcomes. And um, as Brian said, we were the first DNP in the state. We started in 2008. Next slide, please. As you know, um, employers throughout the nation are trying to meet the changing demands of our increasingly complex healthcare systems. The change in reimbursement from fee-from-service to all the risk-based reimbursement services and the bundled pay payment models have created an acute need for systematic care coordination. Nurse practitioners, particularly who practice in primary care, are now facing those new macro regulations that call for quality metrics as part of reimbursement strategy. So they are dealing with new regulations that require specific quality measures for primary care. And then we have many care coordinators, case managers, et cetera, in all segments of the system. And they're now dealing with rapid patient movement between levels of care. Also, our all new, new technologies are driving the demand for nurses with systems level focus and systems level skills. So as we're moving from acute care to community care, we recognize that population health has become a very much of a focus for hospitals and other healthcare agencies for partnering with a variety of community-based agencies. Next slide, please. So for those of you that are considering the DNP, I think it's important to, to note that nurse practitioner programs have almost universally moved to the doctoral degree. And in order to achieve parity with other professionals, the doctoral degree is recognized as the future for all advanced practice nurses. So that's why the School of Nursing has developed several programs that have very strong leadership components, starting with the master's degree at the clinical nurse leader to the executive, level, level, executive leadership doctorate. And now we're adding the population health leadership because of these changes. Our graduates do report increased job opportunities and also report that the education and mentoring they received at USF significantly improved their practice. Next slide, please. So this is uh, Dr. Robin Bucari speaking. So why a pop health focus? We responded to the latest trends in healthcare and healthcare reimbursement in developing this innovative population health leadership program. What is population health? Population health is defined as health outcomes for a group of individuals. These groups can be employees, ethnic groups, communities, or even an entire nation. Population health care gives doctorally prepared nurses the opportunity to lead an interdisciplinary team to provide value-based health care that can improve the health outcomes of large groups of individuals. Next slide, please, Jamar. These doctorally prepared graduates will have the skills to help design new innovative population-based health care programs, lead interdisciplinary teams to provide care coordination aimed at improving health outcomes in a variety of settings, systematically search for and synthesize the strongest evidence to provide evidence-based interventions to improve the quality and safety of care, and advocate for improving health disparities. Next slide, please. This slide lists some of the roles that nurses have as population health leaders of the future. These roles, uh, many um, are still being developed and many more yet to be developed. Every day there's a, it seems like there's a new role. And it's going to take a combination of both direct and indirect care providers working together to improve the health of populations. Next slide, please, Jamal. So this is the diagram of the framework that we use to develop the curriculum for this new Pop Health Leadership DNP program. All the theory and practicum courses fall into these four components. 
and they provide a very strong foundation to help doctorally prepared nurses lead an interdisciplinary team to improve health outcomes, improve quality of life for patients, reduce healthcare utilization and costs, and diminish inequities. Next slide, please. Students that begin this program in January will likely be graduating already in May 2020. The program can be done full-time or part-time, whatever is suitable to your work and lifestyle. It's going to be offered through hybrid learning for nurses working full-time. We will be meeting twice a semester, either in person or by teleconference. And the practicum work can be done in your work setting or another setting as arranged. Next slide, please. This is Dr. Barter again, and this slide depicts the admissions requirements for the DNP, for the Population Health Leadership Program. Applications uh, that we receive are reviewed by faculty committees, and we'd like to say that it's important to have three strong letters of recommendation, uh, preferably from professional colleagues or supervisors, and it's also important to have a very good-looking professional res resume. We do not require the GPA test results because they're not predictive for adult learners who've been away from academic learning for a period of years. The better predictors of success can be found in your career trajectory and in your increased responsibility and professional roles. And that's why I think your resume and your goal statement is important. Um, after this slide, we'll have an opportunity to answer your questions. If you can wait for just a moment, we'll have the Q&A segment. So you still have an opportunity for questions you can type into the control panel and we will answer them. Next slide, Jermon. Okay, I have one question. Can one of you speak more to the program learning outcomes? I could speak to that. Um, we do use the DNP Essentials document that can be found on the website for the American Association of Colleges of Nursing. Um, and many of those essentials for DNP programs are population health related. So we have program learning outcomes that are related to both um, clinical and uh, other skills such as um, data analysis, uh, informatics, epidemiology, uh, evidence-based practice, uh, legal issues related to community practice and the healthcare system in general. Um, and I'll ask Dr. DeCary and Brian to add to this if you want to. Sure, I would just like to say, looking back at what we talked about in these slides too, uh, Marjorie, that it, we certainly have based our program outcomes on the essentials, but we are also trying to remain in touch with what the market demands are as well. So that we do, as we mentioned, we kind of are, are watching what's happening in terms of uh, the response of the marketplace to uh, the demand for DNPs and to build our pro uh, program outcomes accordingly. Uh, the only thing I would add to it, I second or uh, support everything you both said, but we would also be happy to share the program learning outcomes because in order to get the program approved by the university, we worked on them and used uh, a lot of documents uh, that had been developed uh, nationally for people developing pop health curriculum including a couple frameworks. We showed you one on the slides. 
That's correct. And right now on the uh, USF School of Nursing and Health Professions website for the DNP, we have the learning outcomes that were derived from the American Association of Colleges of Nursing um, Essentials document for the DNP program. So you can go on our website right now and get the overall uh, learning outcomes for the DNP and then the population health outcomes are derived from those. Okay, we have another question, which is, can you speak to the time commitment for this program? I can begin an answer to that. Um, Robin mentioned earlier that if you begin full time, it's, uh, it's, the program is designed to be completed in seven semesters. This is not a cohort program, so it does allow for opportunities, as we talked about, for a part time approach, so that could extend that period of time. In general, it's a lot of work, but it's quite doable, and we've had a lot of students in our other DNP uh, programs that certainly are full-time employees as well as full-time students, so it does require a significant commitment each semester, but it's not uh, something that cannot be done while continuing your professional career. All right. Another question is, will this DNP specialty be offered in collaboration with the post-master's FNP plan of study? I'll try to answer that, but I'm a little bit unclear. Is this someone who has a master's degree in nursing and then is going on for an FNP certificate? If, if that's the case, you could do it in collaboration. Um, although the FNP certificate courses are specifically uh, driven, driven by the NOF requirements. So there's a little bit of a difference in that. But it is possible to do both the FNP certificate and the Population Health Leadership DNP programs uh, while you're at USF. Okay, another question is what makes USF unique in terms of of the of this degree um, and what we offer? I think certainly because of our, of our Jesuit mission and our commitment to social justice. Many of the populations that our graduates deal with are vulnerable, what we call vulnerable populations. They are people who don't have the resources and, and, and have many other disparities that need health care. And I think our Jesuit mission really aligns with the nursing focus for those groups. I'd also emphasize what we call the San Francisco advantage too. Just being in San Francisco and being associated with this school uh, provides a, a, an awful lot of exposure and availability of, uh, of what's happening in the field right now. So for example, we have a, a Masters of uh, Health information studies and uh, a lot of population health is focused on the management of big data and health information and you would have exposure by virtue of our school to expertise in this arena but right now with this whole uh, Silicon Valley 2.0 is happening right here in the city of San Francisco so a lot of what's happening on the cutting edge of healthcare is happening here. So that's one major advantage. I think another couple advantages are that uh, our school has a lot of experience with the DNP program. This is a new focus and a new program, but we have a lot of experience. We've been, uh, we're the first in the state, as Brian had said earlier, about offering the DNP and we've been offering it what since 2008 and also the small class size our classes allow you to really get to know the faculty and your fellow students and to interact with both of them and I would say probably the final element that we should mention is the fact that we partner with so many community agencies and faculty are 
frequently embedded in those agencies so that students who are looking for alternative experiences in community health placements have strong faculty relationships to help with that. Great, we have a couple more questions. Can you speak to how this plan supports an MPH graduate? I actually think this is a perfect doctoral degree for a nurse with an MPH degree um, because you already have a strong foundation in community health and this program at the doctoral level will certainly extend that population and add the that uh, framework and add the additional leadership skills and experience for you. Okay, and then the next question is, can you talk a little bit about the faculty in the program, their backgrounds and expertise? Well, that's just in addition to our discussion of the the advantages of USF is one of the fun things about being on faculty here is we come to this from a lot of different backgrounds. Um, you can just see from our next slide of who to contact, you know, for example, uh, my background is, uh, among other things, in law. I'm, I'm both a nurse practitioner and a lawyer. We also have others on faculty that come from a really quite diverse background of of expertise, uh, Robbins in, in mental health, for example. We we're we are, we're a strong and diverse faculty. Okay, last question: What kind of projects do you anticipate students will complete during this program? Well, our students for the DNP do a DNP uh, project that's an evidence-based change of practice project. And every class that you take um, prepares you for, um, as you develop what area that you're going to focus on and what kind of intervention you're going to implement. So, um, these students will be very much involved in looking at the needs of groups and improving health outcomes and reducing health inequities and coming up with a uh, important problem that they can find an evidence-based intervention to implement. And they'll have a, a DNP committee that will help them do that and guide them through the whole process as well as all the courses. It's very exciting to think of the possibilities. I spoke to a potential applicant the other day who has a strong background in NICU, neonatal intensive care nursing, and we were talking about this and the possibilities for developing population health interventions for, for instance, the neonatal intensive care group because they have health needs that extend long after they leave the acute care hospital, perhaps needs that might extend throughout their life. So there's possibility for something like that. There's a possibility for geriatric clinical work or psychiatric populations. Um, I think almost everything that nurses can do is so diverse that with a curriculum like this, you could do your doctoral work in almost any area of nursing. We already have a, in our existing DNP programs a, a wide array of really fascinating projects that people are doing. Uh, I think this change of focus it challenges us as faculty too to help you look for how do we uh, change the focus of, of these uh, options to ensure that it is a population health focus as well. So we're really looking forward to that. And one piece that I might add is we've had students already who have done projects uh, that are international in nature, and I would suspect we may see more of that given this change of focus in the degree. All right, thank you all for your answers. It looks like those are all our questions. So if 
any of the attendees have further questions, they can feel free to email any of the people whose contact info is up on this slide. Wonderful, and thank you, Juman, for your help in moderating. Thank you, and thank you for the people that attended also.